functional movement, fitness. Probably would want to start here and it's drawing time. All right, so uh, it's a real pleasure to be here, Greg, uh, in, your, uh, in your garage gym. This is sort of the ultimate garage gym. And uh, the original whiteboard, really. It's uh, the concept is chalk and, uh, and blackboard. It's uh, fantastic. So what I want to do first is uh, I want to dig into the kind of the real foundational stuff of what makes, of why we do what we do. So for example, human movement, right? We're trying to improve human movement. The basic air squat, which has, you know, seen ridicule in a lot of strength and conditioning communities, is the ideal foundation for good human movement. Would you agree? It's a, it's a critical piece. Isn't there a pretty substantial core stability requirement yep. Yep. in just the unladen air squat? Yep. I want to I wanna back up even more. Okay. I want to look at things like core strength, functional movement, fitness, you know, we know health too. But uh, one of the things that we've found uh, to be helpful and now later essential is given some rigorous definitions to some of these things that we're talking about already. So we're already on the subject of core and core strength. It, it seems fair enough to ask what's the core and what does it strong being mean? mean. Probably would want to start here and that we define these things as a, a family of movements that were categorically unique in their ability to express power. Now when you get to here, and it's drawing time, and I got a guy in a squat, we can talk about this integration, this wetting of the pelvis and spine. Look at a line that'll trisect the spine and bisect the pelvis, call that the midline, and talk about advantageous uh, uh, movement or lack of movement about that line while engaged in functional movement to high power output movements is core strength. Ah, you know? Right. And now we have something. Now, is the squat good for that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, we want to give definitions of things that we can test and measure. How would we measure that core strength? Well, I'd propose a, a, a method that has uh, considerable precision uh, and maybe negligible accuracy, and that is I would use the functional movements again, and I would just, from the physics of the deadlift, tell you that, you know, from this, from this uh, starting uh, uh, posture here, um, my presumption is that this midline is going to deflect less and less under load um, as the loads go up and up. In other words, what happens is your deadlift improves is not one day your spine blows out the side. You know? right. What happens is you get stronger and stronger and stronger. And what deflection is there, becomes negligible. I'm going to work under the assumption that, that overhead squat, squat, deadlift, back squat, all of our movements, uh, uh, even, even the inversion, inverted handstand, push up and handstand, are uh, having an impact on this, are, are improving this midline. So you were saying it's a deadlift, so one, one test of core strength is at what point does your ability to maintain proper alignment of the spine and for pelvis? Sure, for sure. Deadlift, we're doing that. I'm like, God damn, is there a midline failing? Absolutely. Hell yeah. Yeah, if this. Yep. When this happens. Yep. Right? And so if your max dead is 200 pounds. I used pounds, to do that at 200 pounds, and now I, used, now I do it at four. Right. I've and doubled my core strength by one reasonable measure. Why not? Right. Right. Overhead squat? Hi, huh, interesting. I, you know, I'm, I'm tweaking this thing now. From a from a, a very very different uh, uh, position. I mean, this uh, this uh, tendency here with with any uh, 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 deflection at all here, 
I get a, a change on the, on the moment about the hip. And so as this comes forward at all, I get a very pronounced moment about the hip and what midline again. And now from higher up, maybe then uh, here, very different. Very right. different. Right. You're going to be obviously working with different loads. If your max dead is 400, you're not going to be taking 400 overhead. This, this beautifully pendulously gets to hang right. with no control being required. Right. Here, my own control efforts can be my failing. Right. What you're saying is that with the load elevated overhead, uh, movement forward primarily of this load puts a tremendous torque on, this, on, on the midline on, stability. Yep, on midline, yeah. Yep. yep. And so your ability to navigate full range of motion with the overhead squat requires substantial T headline Tell stability. me we're not making this line stronger. That is more capable of, of not just rigidity, but maybe even some follow, favorable follow through movement. I believe some dynamic capacity comes through. Um, in terms of these movements, I'm not gonna buy it. Right. I, I, I look, I, de I define core strength. Right. For our for our, our purposes, I look at the geometry, and I'm not I'm not at a loss for how to attack that line. Right, right. 